We are nearing the end of the top 10 best weapons lists. Today we are going over Bloodborne. Now, as I mentioned with all the other games, it's going to be true for this one as well. Just because something doesn't make it to the list doesn't mean it's going to be bad. There's going to be plenty of amazing weapons that just don't make it onto the top 10 list. And this is going to be especially true for Bloodborne because almost every single weapon in this game is just very viable and can be pretty fun to play with. So honestly, if you're just wanting to decide what weapon you actually do want to go through the game with, I just recommend the one that seems the most fun or the coolest one in your opinion. Just go ahead and play with that because more likely than not, you're going to have a more enjoyable experience with that type of weapon than the, so to speak, best weapons in the game. But for the sake of continuing on with this series, we're going to go ahead and rank these weapons. Starting off at number 10, we have the Burial Blade, which is an arcane and skill type of weapon. Now, unfortunately, its arcane scaling isn't going to be that good, and you're kind of just always better off just going all into that skill and pairing it alongside some physical types of gems because it doesn't really get that good of split arcane damage. And the fact that it actually does get that split damage means you can't buff it as well, which not being able to buff your weapon with fire or bolt is going to be a downside. But the weapon still performs extremely well. The untransformed one-handed version is going to be a curve sword, very quick moveset, nice horizontal swipe, actually has some pretty decent range, nice lunge, pretty quick charged heavy, pretty good at just cleaning up trash mobs in general, but the transformed two-handed version with a scythe is just going to be the much better option. Starting off with the fact that the animation is just super clean, all like transformed attack animations are just amazing. But the reason as to why the Burial Blade is going to be better two-handed is because obviously you get more range, you get more damage, it is going to be slower, but you actually do get some hype armor throughout some of your attacks, so you actually can tank and trade out very easily. And also trading out with this weapon is actually not that big of a deal because the rally potential is actually really high, especially when in the scythe form. And another thing that I like about it is that it kind of like overswings the weapon itself. Most other weapons kind of just have like a 180 degree horizontal swipe. But with the Burial Blade, it feels like it just swings a lot further than it really normally would. Meaning that if you're surrounded by a bunch of enemies or if enemies are just moving very quickly, there's less of a chance that you miss with the Burial Blade compared to other types of weapons. And combine this with the fact that you actually get bonus damage while doing some running and dashing attacks, it turns it into a very solid option. Now the charged heavy attack is going to be pretty slow. And I kind of wish that it did do that cool like double swiping attack that German does get. But unfortunately, it is just like the one horizontal swipe. Now, the only real downside about this weapon is that you do get it like right at the end of the game. You have to kill the final boss to go acquire the weapon. But if you just do kill him and then just quit out, you can just go buy it at the shop. And you can probably take the weapon into the DLC because both versions of the weapon are very powerful. Number nine, we have the Chikage. Now, the Chikage is going to be your lone katana in this game. And katanas are just amazing in like every game. They have pretty decent speeds, very nice range, and they probably get some of the best movesets as well. Now, the Chikage actually does do split blood damage and physical damage. Now, the blood damage version is only going to appear when you actually have it transformed, which when transformed, it actually does two-hand the weapon, meaning they actually can't use it alongside a gun, but it actually does enhance the damage by a lot because you do get an S-scaling in blood tinge to just make the damage just go nuclear. Now, the trade-off for this is you're going to be draining a little bit of your health. It drains roughly about 0.85% of your health every single second, so it is going to be a major downside. I do recommend just going in and out of the transformed versions because the transformed attacks are just very quick and do very high amounts of damage and you can just limit the amount of damage that you just take. Now, if you still wanted to use this katana because you think it looks cool and you just like the moveset, but you just didn't like the idea of just taking this damage over time, then honestly, you could just like leave it untransformed the entire time because it still is very viable. I recommend picking up an uncanny Chikage and just pairing it alongside a bunch of physical gems and some skill boosting gems, and it could still be extremely viable. But if you want to really maximize your damage, just going all into that blood tinge and just spamming those charged heavy attacks, which does take a chunk of your health even more, just using a regular heavy attack will drain about 200 HP and a fully charged heavy attack could take up to 400, which is a pretty large amount of health, but the damage is well worth it because as you can see, everything is just getting shredded and they get staggered very quickly and smaller enemies will just get tossed to like the other side of the planet, which is just insane. The fact that you have like a smaller, quicker type of a katana that can just like knock enemies back that far is extremely good. Now, obviously this does add a different element in terms of like your play style because you have to manage your health a lot more and it just makes it just not as easy to use. So if you're going to the game the first time around, I probably wouldn't recommend going with the Chikage due to it just not being that user-friendly. It'll be one of those weapons you probably carry around like the second time around or like if you just get really used to the mechanics because with the speeds, the moveset, the damage, it's just undeniable. 
Number eight, we have the Rikuyo, which this bad boy probably has the most badass and complicated moveset in the entire game. This weapon serves as like a dagger, curve sword, katana, twin blade, all in one. And it's like one of the very few weapons in the game that you could just spam any type of button and it could just work. Like any type of playstyle that you have alongside of this weapon just works very nicely. It's just very viable. The untransformed light attacks are just very nice. Good mix up of horizontal swipes and poking attacks. The transformed attacks are extremely quick. The transformed L2 attacks are like even faster. They can combo even better stun unlock smaller enemies extremely well. They can lunge very far. The heavy attacks can be some very nice pokes and you can combo those into light attacks and combo those into the L2, into the transformed attack. It doesn't matter what you do, you can spam every single button and it could literally just work. I can just talk about this weapon's moveset forever because it has like so much potential, especially with like those L2s. Like I recommend if you pick up the Rikuyo, just use the transformed L2 attacks and try and just combo them in with heavy and light attacks and you will understand how beautiful this thing can actually perform. Now this weapon actually does get a split skill and arcane scaling. It scales much better off skill and the fact that it doesn't get split arcane damage, meaning that you just probably just always gonna go all into skill when using this weapon. Which skill based weapons I tend to prefer more anyway because your critical damage and your visceral attacks scale off your skill stat. So a weapon like this can just make for a very nice pairing. Now the only unfortunate thing I can say about the Rikuyo is that you get it very late in the game, like in the last area, in the last part of the DLC, of the most annoying and obnoxious enemies in the game. But once you get good enough and kill these stupid giant sharks, you have acquired probably the coolest weapon in the game. Number seven, we have the Holy Moonlight Sword, probably the most badass looking sword in the entire game. Moonlight Sword is always incredibly fun, those projectiles never get old, and the fact that you actually get access to projectiles in a game with weapons that don't really get much range and much projectile options, it is going to be extremely beneficial. And the Holy Moonlight Sword probably gets the best projectile as well because it is high damaging and incredibly cheap. A fully charged heavy projectile attack only takes up a couple bullets and the follow-up attack just comes out even faster. And that combo can be extremely deadly against most enemies in this game. Now this weapon actually does get split arcane and physical damage, gets an A scaling in arcane and a B scaling in strength. Now the physical damage is only going to be a part of the untransformed version and when transformed it's going to be doing pure arcane damage. So if you actually plan on actually using the transformed version, I recommend just going all into arcane, but if you actually plan on using the physical portion more, then you will go into strength, which I definitely recommend you probably just go into a little bit of strength anyway, because arcane damage in this game is very polarizing. It's either like the best thing to have or just complete and utter trash against a lot of different bosses. So having the physical portion on hand is going to be really nice. But yeah, like there are just so many bosses that are actually weak to arcane, but there's probably even more bosses that are just like incredibly resist to it. Kanehurst Castle is like a pure like example of this weapon working like this. The Moonlight Sword actually does get a 50% Righteous bonus, meaning that it's actually going to do 50% more damage against enemies of the church, which basically includes all the enemies in Kanehurst Castle. So all the trash mobs, you're going to be doing amazing damage. But the final boss in the area, Lagarius, is incredibly resist to arcane to the point where your transformed Moonlight Sword is going to be doing doo-doo damage. And also another thing I don't like about arcane builds is going to be its synergy with its guns. They can actually serve as some nice like AoE type of options, but it's like you have that high damaging potential like you have with the Evelyn with blood tinge type of builds. But even with all those negatives that I've mentioned, the Holy Moonlight Sword still makes for one of the best weapons in the entire game purely because of those projectile attacks and how high damage they actually can be. Number six, we have the Beast Claw. Now this is my personal favorite weapon in the entire game, which there might be a little bit of bias as to why it's at number six, but I still try to be objective as possible when talking about these weapons. Now, yes, I know this weapon doesn't get the best scalings, doesn't get the most amazing base damage, obviously doesn't have much range either, but this weapon actually has amazing damage potential without much effort having to be put into it as well. Because this weapon actually does get a perpetual beast blood pellet effect when you actually have it transformed, meaning that you basically have an infinite beast blood pellet, which if you don't know what a beast blood pellet is, it actually gives you the effect of beasthood, and when you actually attack enemies, it increases your beasthood meter, meaning they actually can output up to 70% more damage if that beast meter bar is just completely maxed out. And if you pair this alongside the beast types of runes, you can actually fill up that bar even quicker, meaning that you can actually just output 70% more damage very quickly and very consistently. And if you pair this alongside the beast's embrace rune as well, it's a wrap, it's over. You have the most fun weapon in the entire game. I don't care what anybody says. Not only does this weapon have amazing animations, amazing sound design, not only does it give you that awesome feeling of like turning into like a rabid beast that can like just maul people's faces off, but you also get a banging ass moveset. The heavy attacks lunge really nicely, attack multiple times, all of which can actually improve your beast hood meter very quickly. 
You also get an inherent beast for attack for free without having to consume any types of bullets. The running attacks, both light and heavy, are extremely quick and also very high damaging. Now, the only things that I don't really like about this moveset is that when you do have it transformed, you don't really get a charged heavy attack, so you don't really get the option of having those backstabs. And the transformed attacks can be kind of slow, but not that it really needs those transformed attacks anyway to actually do some decent damage. And one thing I also forgot to mention, this thing can also be buffed. You can just throw in fire paper or bolt paper on top of this thing, depending on what enemy you're actually going up against, and you can just output even more damage. This thing can just be the ultimate boss killing machine if you just spec into it correctly. So if you haven't used the beast claws before, I definitely recommend that you do. Number five, we have the Hunter Axe. This thing is just a good or reliable. That's just amazing at everything. You can pick it up right at the beginning and it can carry from start to finish with little to no issues. It actually gets very fast attacks with its untransformed version, nice horizontal swipes, pretty quick charged heavy, has incredibly high rally potential, meaning that trading out with this weapon is actually pretty easy to do. And its transformed version is going to be incredible. You get extremely good range. You get amazing movesets because you get access to horizontal, vertical, and poking attacks. And also to mention the best part about the transformed moveset, the charged heavy spin to win. You can't ever go wrong with a spin to win. And in this game, it is probably just going to be the best version of a spin to win. Because not only does it do stupid damage, but it also just knocks enemies and sends them flying. Such large distances that it makes it incredibly satisfying and fun to use. Now, one thing you might think that it actually is lacking in is like some stagger types of damage against larger enemies who might not stagger them well. But that's where the L2 attacks come into play because they're just a little bit slower, but they just hit a lot harder and they can stagger enemies a lot more consistently. So yeah, there's like nothing bad I can really say about this weapon. I think it has like no downsides. Number four, we have the church pick. This bad boy is just incredible. You have this very fast movesets, very high damaging, and you have the option to transform it into like some big halberd, very reminiscent of the hunter axe, and just get long range attacks that are pretty quick and actually can stagger enemies nicely. This is like one of the few weapons that you could probably just leave untransformed and probably just have a more easy experience. Because with how fast those attacks actually do come out, it actually can trivialize a lot of the game, especially those running and dashing attacks. But another thing as to what makes this weapon absolutely amazing is that this thing actually does have a beast hunter damage modifier, meaning that all of its thrusting types of attacks deal 20% more damage. And the thrusting attacks that it actually gets is like 90% of its moveset. Almost everything that this thing does gets thrusting attacks. So I kind of look at this the same way I look at the Hunter's Axe, just like a better version though, because it can just output more damage. So yeah, once again, there's like nothing bad that I can really say about this. Number three, we have Ludwig's Holy Blade. This bad boy is not really everything that you want, but it definitely is everything that you need. This is like the Claymore of Bloodborne. Everything that this bad boy does it does the best. Its untransformed version is basically just like a regular straight sword, very quick attacks, amazing moveset, good variety, good charged heavy attack. The transformed version is just like a big great sword, which is also pretty quick, has even more range, staggers very nicely, very solid moveset with those quick horizontal swipes that can just make good for crowd control and hitting enemies that like to dodge and move around a whole bunch. Its transformed attacks are actually pretty quick as well and it's a very high damaging. And you also just get amazing scalings, a B scaling in strength and skill while having an A scaling in arcane. Like you just can do amazing damage to this thing and it just works with many different types of builds. And it is definitely going to be one of the easiest weapons to use in this game. Number two, we have the Saw Cleaver and the Saw Speed. Both of these things are just very similar in how they perform. You can honestly throw in the Beast Hunter safe as well. All three of these things are just the same when it comes to like their shorter ranged variants. Basically the exact same moveset, very similar range and damage too. The only differences with these weapons will be their transform state, which there aren't really that big of a difference. I think the Saw Spear is going to have the best transform state because it actually does get access to poking attacks and it actually does stay serrated when transformed where the Saw Cleaver doesn't. And obviously that serrated benefit is it's going to be 20% more damage against a bunch of different beasts. But the Soul Cleaver actually does get higher base damage. So you actually probably can output more damage in most other cases. Now, the reason as to why these weapons are just all going to be amazing is because they're so fast, they output so much damage, they're really easy to use, and those transformed attacks are just beyond broken. Those things are just ridiculous. They just do so much damage, they're really quick, and they can stagger really well, and obviously just have really nice range because you're transforming the weapon in and out. This one singular attack can just trivialize the entire game. Because typically transformed attacks will do a lot more damage than like regular light attacks or even heavy attacks sometimes, but the trade-off being is that they tend to be a lot slower, but not with this thing. The transformed attacks 
are so fast. And using either the Saw Cleaver or the Saw Spear, it's going to result in such an easy time and an easy playthrough. And the fact that you can get the Saw Cleaver right at the beginning of the game and it ends up being one of the best weapon, if not the best weapon in some people's eyes. Like literally your starting weapon has very fast attacks, very high damage, good variety in attacks as well because you also get vertical and horizontal swipes. You also get a waning gem slot as well, means that it's just going to be versatile and viable throughout all facets of the game. So the Saw Cleaver and the Saw Spear, definitely going to be some of the best weapons in the entire game. Number one, we have the Whirly Gig Saw, Mr. Big Boy DPS himself, that's incredibly fun to use, can cheese and stun lock so many enemies in this game that it's not even funny. Now starting off with the untransformed version, pretty boring, kind of shit, don't really care about it. I mean, it's not too bad, like it does serve as a nice horizontal swipe, the heavy attack isn't too bad either, but the transformed version is where it's at. It does so much damage, so quick, nice range, it gets an S scaling and strength, so you can just melt everything in the entire game, especially with that L2 attack. When you turn on that pizza cutter activator mode, it just stun locks all types of smaller enemies in the game to where they can just like walk into it and then just die like a few seconds later. That basically is what happens here. But even outside of that, every other attack is still perfectly fine. The running attacks are really quick. The dashing attacks are also very fast and have some nice range. The transformed attacks, although pretty slow, are very high damaging. So the fact that this weapon is like so incredibly easy to use, still very fast, nice range, has very high cheese potential, and can output this much damage. Yeah, no, I don't care. This thing is just the best weapon in the entire game. But yes, that does now conclude the list. As always, please let me know what your opinions are down in the comments below. And please do like and subscribe because I will be actually making some more videos along the way. The next one is probably going to be the top 10 best Elden Ring weapons. I actually will separate it for the smithing or the ones that can be infused and the summer base weapons, the one that cannot be infused. And also do follow me on Twitch as well because I should be live by the time this video is out, actually in the middle of doing a Katana marathon and actually should be playing Bloodborne today. So definitely check me out there. Anyway, catch you guys around. Bye.